The rectus sheath block is a very useful abdominal fascial plane block that will cover midline incisions both above and below the umbilicus. The rectus sheath is a fascial envelope encasing each half of the rectus abdominis muscle. The T7 to T12 nerves run forward in the tap plane and they pierce the lateral edge of the rectus sheath, entering deep to the rectus abdominis muscle. These nerves ascend to the surface through the lateral half of the muscle, innervating the muscle along the way and ending in the anterior cutaneous branches that supply skin and superficial tissues. A rectus sheath block is therefore ideal for providing somatic analgesia of the abdominal midline. Injections should be performed deep to the rectus abdominis muscle, between the muscle in the posterior sheath, targeting the lateral aspect before the nerves ascend up into the muscle. There are a few caveats that should be noted. First, there is no posterior sheath inferior to the arcuate line, which is why landmark guided rectus sheath blocks are not performed below the umbilicus. However, infraumbilical blocks can be done if ultrasound guidance is used. In the infraumbilical area, the deep inferior epigastric artery lies in the plane under the rectus abdominis muscle, although usually the medial half. It serves as an important landmark to the correct fascial plane, but obviously should be avoided. Finally, note that in some individuals, the thoracoabdominal nerves may pierce the rectus abdominis directly without actually traveling in the fascial plane of the sheath, which may account for instances of suboptimal analgesia. For single injection blocks, an in-plane approach from lateral to medial is recommended. Note how lateral the entry point is due to the width of the rectus abdominis. This allows it to be performed even in the presence of wound dressings. Look for a local anesthetic spread lifting the muscle away from the hyperechoic line of the posterior sheath. This video illustrates a supraumbilical rectus sheath block. The block needle is inserted into the lateral aspect of the sheath deep to the muscle but ensuring that the tip stays above the posterior layer and within the sheath. Local anesthetic separates the muscle off the sheath, producing the classic lenticular spread pattern of fascial plane injection. This next video shows a block inferior to the umbilicus and the arcuate line. There is no posterior rectus sheath, only transversalis fascia and peritoneum deep to the muscle. The deep inferior epigastric artery is visible in the medial edge of the screen and is located in the plane of injection as a pulsatile structure. As before, the needle is inserted through the muscle and careful hydrodissection is performed. Once again, we're looking to see that the local anesthetic does not spread within muscle, but rather lifts the muscle off the fascial layers. The local anesthetic injection should travel towards the deep inferior epigastric artery in the same plane. Knowing this fact, we can see that the correct plane in this instance is actually one layer deeper than where the needle currently is, and it should be repositioned. Pain from midline laparotomy incisions usually outlast the effect of single injection blocks, so inserting rectus sheath catheters are ideal, and this can be easily done at the end of surgery. Either catheter over needle or catheter through needle sets can be used. Here I am using a catheter over needle set. I personally prefer to use an out of plane approach with transverse imaging so that the catheter remains within the lateral aspect of the sheath throughout its course. Hydrodissection confirms spread in the correct location between the muscle and the posterior sheath, and the tip of the catheter needle can be seen in this instance. The probe can then be turned 90 degrees into a longitudinal in-plane view to confirm the trajectory of the needle and catheter and the subsequent spread of local anesthetic. The same view can be used to confirm position of the catheter. An intermittent bolus dosing regimen every six to eight hours is preferred, but continuous infusion can also be used. 